In this video, I'm gonna give you my top four lessons for my pursuit of the perfect mast sail combination. These four lessons have taken me a whole winter of training through a data-driven approach, but I'm gonna hand them over to you in a short YouTube video. So, what are they? Bendier masts don't necessarily bend more. Number two, mast stiffness is about leech tension. Third thing I'm gonna tell you is about how you should phrase the conversation with your sailmaker and what your sailmaker should be thinking of when they're adapting a luff curve to your mast for your weight. And lastly, I'm gonna tell you about the golden ratio of leech tension to writing moment that you can calculate on the water with a low tail to get you to the absolute optimum setting for leech tension. This is especially true of the Europe, the Finn and the OK, but some of these lessons can be applied to other unstayed rigs like in the Ilka and the Aero. So first of all, what is a good sail mast setup? Holy gray of what getting to is a leech which just as we are meeting our maximum writing moment, the leech is just opening up to the ideal twist. When we get overpowered, the leech opens up further and spills wind. And as we become e underpowered, we ease a bit of sheet and we can just trim the fourth corner and twist of our sail efficiently. Now this is where you get a bit of a negative feedback process, which makes getting the ma right mass bend and sail for your weight critical. So I'm here on the water to talk to you about the paradox which is sheeting on a mainsail. One thing it does, straining up the leech, increases your power. The second thing it does is flattens the camber out and reduces your power. So we're gonna have a look at that now. So as I sheet on, you'll see the tension on the sheet increasing and the tension on the leech increasing and that has firmed up the leech of that sail, reducing the, uh, sorry, increasing the angle of attack and increasing the power, especially up high. However, it's a paradox because it also does something else. It reduces power. I've eased it off the tension. I want you to see again what happens when I, um, when I sheet on. So slowly sheeting on, increasing leech tension increasing leech tension and now you'll see the other thing that's happened is that leech tension is pulling backwards and down on the mast tip that is bending the mast and stretching out the sail fabric between the leech which is taut and the mast track where the sail's in stretching out that fabric and reducing the camber and therefore reducing the power in the sail and the key here is if you do not have the right mast stiffness, then what happens is you will sheet your sail down to the deck, bending the mast and reducing the camber. You'll reduce the camber quicker than you will firm up the leech. The leech won't be stiff enough to hold your tension. So how to get the balance right? Well, this comes back to what I've learnt this winter from lots of testing and how I've come to think about mass stiffness, rake, and leech tension in the Europe. What's interesting is the Europe class talks a lot about rake, so how forward or back your mast is to control leech tension, whereas some of the classes, like the Finn especially, talks about leech tension in their tuning guides and the rake kind of looks after itself. Let's first of all start about talking about rake and defining our settings by rake. If we have two masts, one stiff and one soft, we set them to the same rake, put the same sail up and sheet them both to the deck, the tip will move backwards the same amount on both masts and it should give us a similar mass curve. This means the adjustment the sailmaker has to make for the luff curve is minimal, it's just a tweak, and I will do a whole other video on how mass bends and the comparison between measurement mass curves and sailing mass curves. So here's takeaway number one. 
a bendier mast doesn't necessarily bend more. This sounds pretty counterintuitive, so I've come to the sailing club to prove it to you. So I've got my boat and my mast. I'm gonna put the mast in at a set rake with a set leech length, pull the boom to the deck, measure the leech tension and measure the mast bend. And then I'm gonna repeat that process with a much softer mast. And what I hope to demonstrate is they both have a similar mast curve, but the stiffer mast, mine, has a higher leech tension. The setup for measuring leech tension, the tape measure and this Dyneema are on the halyard lock. Um, I'm using both a uh, Persola line gauge and a um, Cyclops load cell. Sheet this to the deck. Just use the outhaul for the fine trimming, five meters and six centimeters, 29 and three quarters on the uh, solar line gauge. With the boat on its side, measuring at the half the deflection or displacement you get in the mast and the bend. So you can see there that is basically like one four, one four two mil. So this is the soft mass on my boat. Half height is one four five. Twenty six and a quarter kilos of leech tension. So still the same rake, which is five meters forty four. Same leech length, which is five meters and six centimeters. And the bend, generally, the curves are pretty much identical for the same rake for different mass. The, the big difference is about three kilos of leech tension. Now, what's interesting is if everything is set up properly, two sailors have do two different weights with the correct mast, one stiff, one bendy for their two different weights, should be sailing with pretty similar luff curve, only a little modification for the distribution of that curve, but the sail will be curving by the same amount. Now this can lead you to a pretty big pitfall. If you look at the measurement bends for the masts and you take a mast for a lighter sailor which bends more in measurement configuration and add that as a luff curve offset when adapting a design for them, you would add sail material. But we know from what I've just shown you that bendier masts don't bend more. So for a lighter sailor, they're gonna have extra sail material added in the luff. And that's gonna end up as extra camber in the sail, giving them more power and more drag when actually they probably want less. This should be the second take home point about what a sail maker should be thinking about. Ideally, they can recommend you a mast with the right fore aft stiffness for your weight so that you hit the precise leech tension on the rake that that sail is designed for. However, if you think your mass is a bit soft for you, or you want to sail with more leech tension for more pointing, then you need to tell your sail maker that. And their response should be to add a little bit of extra luff curve to account for the fact that you are raking your mass forward and over bending it a little bit compared to the design state. Equally, if you are overpowered or your mass is a bit too stiff then you should rake your mass back and sail with a bit underbent and let your sail maker know this so they can reduce the luff curve a little bit to make sure you don't have too much camber too much depth in your sail so the final part of this video is going to be another key area to take home and that is about the optimum ratio or the golden ratio between the leech tension which is generated from the spring in the mast and the leech tension which is generated by your own writing moment leaning against the leech. So I'm here to talk to you about the golden ratio. That's the difference between the leech tension which is created by my mast stiffness as I sheet it down to the deck versus the leech tension generated by my body weight 
as I lean out and the writing moment I can produce. There's two things I need to do. First of all, I need to get the leech tension from the mass alone without any writing moment. So to get that, I've got to sheet the mainsail to the deck and not lean out. So I'm just going to go head to wind and you're going to get a, um, a reading here about 20 kilos, which is the tension just from my mast alone. What I'm gonna do is sheet on, sheet on, down to the deck, not hiking out yet. So, what's that, about 21, just because I'm sat on the side. And then as I lean out against this sail, you're gonna see the extra kilos of leech tension I produce by hiking and because the wind's a bit inconsistent I'm going to hike for about a minute and get the increased leech tension. Now the golden ratio, take away the base tension from this hiking tension, you'll be left with just the tension generated by your writing moment leaning against the re leech and what that will tell you is a ratio of that kind of writing moment tension versus the base tension is the ratio of the two. And that dictates your twist. So the tension in the mast, the spring of the mast, stiffens up the leech. The tension that's produced by me hiking out against the sail is opening up and pushing out the leech. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you may be able to spot a little bit of side bend at the top of this mast. I'm not talking about side bend here because I don't think it's a significant contributor to the overall leech load, but it is another factor. I'll cover more on side bend in a follow up video about the dynamics of mass. When you want a golden ratio of those two tensions, which is roughly 30%. Now, if you're a heavier sailor with a stiffer mast, you'll have more leech tension and you'll create a higher writing moment, which again will create more leech tension. But the ratio of those two types of tension gives you the sail twist. And no matter what your size is, that ratio remains the same. So hopefully that's giving you insight to how I think about setting up my Europe and it's probably quite interesting for fins and OKs as well who are working with similar sorts of properties and boats. This is the first of probably three videos I'm going to put out on my learnings for my kind of data setup in the Europe. I've got another one which is going to be on how the mast actually bends on the water and the mechanics of that and fitting a um, sailing luff curve from a measurement condition luff curve. The other one is about downwind sailing wave technique and trying to quantify what a good downwind sailing style is through data. I come from an asymmetric background, I had no idea what I was aiming for downwind. So using the data and video footage has been really helpful for me. And I've got some pointers which I think uh, will help you as well. So stick around for those.